Uh, good afternoon to one and all of you uh, who have attended this session. Today's is a webinar on this topic which we have, which is YOLO object detection using OpenCV and Python. My name is Kalyan. I have been into the field of uh, analytics for the past uh, eight years and the field of IT for the past 11 years. These are the topics which we will cover in today's one hour. Okay, we'll try to understand about introduction to computer vision. We'll try to understand what is object detection, what is OpenCV. We'll try to understand what is convolution neural network and how it is used for image processing. And then finally, we'll try to understand what the YOLO algorithm is and we'll try to have a hands on specific to YOLO algorithm. Okay, that's what is covered in today's session. The first slide that you could see right now is introduction to computer vision. When I speak about computer vision, what's the very first thing that comes to your mind? How, you, how would you define computer vision in plain, simple terms to a layman? If I have to formalize this definition, it would be a kind of scientific field, okay? With the help of which computers gain high level understanding from digital images or videos. So when I say videos, how are videos and images related? Frames in the form of pixels, not exactly pixels, combination of images with audio, you could say that. So essentially, you could actually break down a video depending on the frame size, which will essentially give you certain images. So if you pass certain images, let's say you have a million images, and if you pass those images at a particular rate, you would essentially end up having a video. That's what video essentially is in, in, in very layman terms. Okay. Now, when I speak about computer vision, there are certain fields in computer vision which you need to be aware of. Okay. What are those fields? When it's when it comes to computer vision, you have object detection, you have image classification, you have image captioning, you have image reconstruction, you also have instance segmentation. Let me give you an example. I am traveling in a particular busy road, okay? I could see on the roads, I have different modes of transportation. I have trams, okay? I have public cars. I have two wheelers, okay? In two wheelers, I have scooters, I have bicycles, okay? And beside the road, I have pavements where people are walking. And also on the public, commutation, I have people who have onboarded them. So what I'll do is I'll apply instance segmentation and I will separate these instances. One instance will have where there are cars. One instance will have where people are working in the pavement. One instance with people with public transportation, let's say trams, trams. The other could be one with two wheelers. This is what I'll be doing on instance segmentation. If I have to detect, if, if I have to use object detection, what would I be doing? On those segments which I have instantiated or on those segments which I have, uh, say, segmented, I have segmented those as certain segments. I really do not know what they are. If I have to understand what this instance consists of, I'll have to apply object detection. I apply object detection and I get to know that that particular thing that I have is a tram or that particular thing that I have is a car or a bicycle or a people traveling on the pavement. If I have to apply image classification on the same image, what, what I could do is I'll have a particular portion of my image and I'll try to find out whether that particular portion has a car or a traveler or a particular person working in the pavement. Okay. If I have to use image captioning, what would I do? I will be passing those image and that particular algorithm, which I have already designed, would give me a particular, say, name for that particular image. The name could be a busy day on the street, which is filled of public, private transportation and people walking. Okay. This could be one example in which you could have object detection, image classification, and image captioning also. For today's session, I will have a very bird's eye view and I'll have mostly a functional viewpoints and at times technical understanding of the things which we, which we will be going to understand. What do you mean by image reconstruction? 
I am pretty much sure most of you have actually wished for that. Okay, it's something that even I had wished for at some point in time. Hunting down thefts, not really image reconstruction. Increase the clarity, scanning. Okay, to help you uh, understand that, let me give you an example and uh, take you down 20 years back to your memory lane. You had clicked a particular image with your parents, which you keep very close to your heart. We, we know 20 years down the line or 25 years down the line, we did not have digital, uh, say, platforms like Facebook and digital camera. So we used to keep those things in an album, right? Physical album. If you had noticed when you kept your things or your, your images uh, in, in albums, some of the images, because you haven't used them for a long period of time, used to get distorted or discolored or disfigured, okay? you could actually apply different kinds of techniques to let's say recolorize those image to let's say improve the quality of that image and also improve whatever distortion and whatever uh, the, whatever things has happened to that image in case you guys are wondering and in case you guys have any one of you have heard about that there is a particular movie which was released a couple of years ago Mughlai Azam okay Mughlai Azam was one of the movies which was I guess uh, originally released around I'm not sure but around 50 to 60 years ago in black and white now this time the movie that was released was purely done in color okay in case someone of you have actually subscribed for Netflix you get to see there are uh, there is a particular documentary of World War II which you could see in colorized version do you know how these things are actually done it is actually using computer vision technique. There is a specific technique which you will be using to colorize your black and white images into uh, what you call it as colored image as well. You could restore your image, you could reconstruct your image, you could uh, reconstruct your soiled image, your broken image, or any particular image which has been distorted or physically, let's say, uh, strained or stressed. You could actually uh, let's say reconstruct those things okay that's what you'll be covering in image reconstruction okay so image reconstruction image captioning giving a name to an image yeah this is actually something which could be done if you pass thousand images and if you pass different labels for those images you could actually end up building a model which will be able to caption any particular image which you want any particular image which does not have any caption Okay, image classification, as someone of you have rightly pointed out, whether it's a dog or a cat, a very trivial example. Object detection, how many of what are the things that we have in that object? I have a cycle, I have a person. Instance segmentation, how many instances do I have in a particular image? These are some of the things which you could find in the area of computer vision. These are some of the techniques which are uh, I would say these are easy techniques. They would read, they, they would require a good amount of uh, practice. They would require a good amount of hold on programming language and, and the necessary techniques as well. They require a good amount of computational power because if you have to build this image from scratch, you might have to do annotation. You might have to build deeper uh, uh, neural network models, which might take a lot of computing pass. We usually go for best of the class infrastructure and usually it's a GPU or a TPU which you will be relying on when you are training any such image, when you are training any such models, okay? Now, what are the various approaches for object detection? Okay, so when I say various approaches for object detection, you could see this particular image that we have. Object detection is a process of finding all possible instances of real world objects such as humans, class, cats, etc., in image or videos. You could have an object detection technique applied onto a video, as in when you play a video, you would be getting all the things which you find in that video being detected with a particular probability score. Okay. You could apply object detection using machine learning and deep learning techniques it's mostly machine learning techniques which are sorry it's mostly deep learning techniques which you'll end up with but yeah you could also do that using some of the machine learning techniques which is available okay and also using deep learning techniques as we have discussed when i speak about machine learning and deep learning i'll give you one particular 
difference, which is something that you'll find in almost all the textbooks and all the uh, internet blogs and all. You would have to specify features for your machine learning algorithm. But that is something that you do not have to do for deep learning algorithms. Deep learning algorithms are pretty much uh, intelligent enough to understand which particular features would be useful and which are not. Okay, machine learning is a subset of deep learning. I think it's the other way around. Machine learning is an ex sorry, deep learning is an extension of machine learning. I would say it's a bit more complicated than machine learning. Deep learning is totally built on neural networks. The basis of deep learning is neural networks, which is not the basis of machine learning. Deep learning has a feedback architecture. So when I say feedback architecture, deep learning learns from its mistakes. So if a particular model is not able to predict an instance correctly, it will have a feedback loop with the help of which next time it is going to predict a bit more correctly than the previous instance. This particular thing is something which is purely absent in machine learning techniques. Machine le deep learning techniques are computationally expensive than machine learning techniques on general. Okay, as someone of you had pointed out, a deep learning technique would require a far a more uh, data set with a good quality than a machine learning technique. Both of them require a good amount of data set, but on a comparative basis, deep learning would require more data set. Okay. Deep learning, as some of you are trying to point it out, has something called as feed forward and something called as back propagation, with the help of which it is able to learn its mistakes, which is something absent in machine learning. Okay. Machine learning does not use high images while image processing is done using CNN and deep learning. Partially correct. You could also do uh, image processing using RNN. Okay. But yeah, obviously, most of the image processing techniques that you'll end up seeing is done using CNN. And machine learning is something that you would not prefer for you for building an image based model. In essence, machine learning fails to handle uh, inputs with higher dimensionality. Okay, when do I say higher dimensionality? Can you explain me how images are some inputs which are considered to have higher dimension? The statement is images are certain inputs with higher dimension. Can you elaborate this example? How do how do I find out the dimension of an image? How do I find out the dimension of an image? So what we essentially have is height, width, and channel. H, W, and C. When I speak about an image, it is essentially a representation of Pixel. Let me show you that. Let me give you some better examples if I could find. Okay, let's be content with this. This is one of the black and white images that I have. Okay, and if I specifically look into this particular object, okay, this is the object which I'm trying to represent, and I'm doing this using this particular shot of image and what does this image essentially represent this image represents a black and white grid okay you could see something as zeros over here these are essentially the black points okay you could see these values so the maximum value that it could extend is 255 so this is the width and this is the length and we have something called as channel since this is a gray gray scaled image so the channel is zero okay if it's a color channel it will be one and in case of color channel as someone mentioned it could be either r g and b red green and blue the understanding is that whatever color you would be finding in any of the images that you could find in the universe will be a mixture of rgb in some portion you'll have r more in some portion you'll be having green more if you consider this image, you'll find some traces of green over here. You'll find some traces of blue over here. Okay, that's what a particular image is representing. So when I say an image is a particular input which is having a higher dimensionality, I am referring to this rows and columns. Okay, usually you will find so the better the pixel of that image, the better the resolution of that image dot per pixel DPI, sorry, uh, DOS per inches 
you would find a very huge image as well. Okay, so when you say it's a six megapixel image, that means the resolution is high. So for such images, you will find the dimension is pretty much big over there. Okay, this was some basics about what you could actually learn from uh, images that we have in hand. Okay, I went a bit deep on this, I guess. Okay, so what is OpenCV? OpenCV is a Python library, as same as a Pandas library and a NumPy library. Okay, just from the functionality point of view, but on from the working point of view, OpenCV mostly deals with images. Okay, it's an open source library from computer vision. Most of the things that you'll find in OpenCV are mostly having their roots in C and C++. So for some of the methods that you'll find in OpenCV, they are mostly a kind of Python wrapper which are built around C and C++ libraries, okay? It provides the facility to machine it provides the facility to a machine to recognize faces, objects. You could do, let's say, you could in, you could increase the pixel size. You could uh, you could have uh, you could do a dilation on that. You could do an erosion on images. You could do a lot of things using OpenCV. Okay, some of the things that you could do using OpenCV are something that you could find in this particular page. And once again, I have given you the link for this particular thing as well. Okay. When I speak about image processing, I could actually do a lot of things using image processing. Okay. There is something called as ero ero erosion and dilation. This is what is being done over here. This is how you would be applying erosion and dilation. This is mostly the documentation that I have for image processing for an OpenCV library. And you could almost find all the things that you have in this particular thing. Okay. If I click on more morphology transformation, I could say opening, closing, top hat, black hat. These are different types of morphological transformation which you will end up using when you are doing OpenCV and image processing. Okay. The next thing that I'm going to do is. We already understand what convolution neural network is. When I speak about convolution neural network, as you guys might be knowing, machine learning is mostly divided into supervised and unsupervised learning. Similarly, deep learning is also divided into supervised and unsupervised learning. Okay, so when I speak about deep learning, you have supervised and you have unsupervised. When I speak about supervised learning, one of the learning technique that I have in supervised learning is convolution neural network. Okay, so I have convolution neural network, I have artificial neural network, I have recurring neural network, I have long short term memory model, I have a lot of things in supervised model. RNN, as I had mentioned, falls under supervised learning technique. So when I say supervised learning technique, you have of supervised data, the data with an independent and dependent variable on which you would be building the model and applying certain things. As some of you have rightly suggested, CNNs are mostly used for image processing. It could be for image, it could be for object detection, it could be for image classification, it could be for a lot of things. There are certain architectures which you would be, or like there are certain frameworks on building this architecture which essentially needs to be followed when you are building a convolution neural network model okay similarly in the area of computer vision and in the area of convolution neural network you have something which you call it as object detection yolo technique you only live once is something which is related to yolo so yolo technique is a technique for which you would use to understand object detection. You use YOLO technique for object detection methods. There are different varieties of YOLO, okay? If you go through this particular document, you'll understand the different YOLO techniques that we have, okay? Initially, it started with YOLO 1, YOLO 2, YOLO 3. YOLO 3 was one of the best techniques for some time. Now we have YOLO 4, 5, and 6 as well, okay? So this is how a YOLO, architecture looks like this is something that we are totally not going to discuss 
you could apply yolo algorithm for classification and for regression as well it totally depends on the problem statement that you have now the thing which we are going to cover right now is the hands-on part wherein we will try to see some of the basic things that could be done using yolo okay so when i say the basic thing it includes uh, the pre-processing that could be done you will also try to understand how you could read a particular image using OpenCV. And then for detecting images or for detecting faces, we are going to apply two techniques. Initially, we'll try with hard cascades. Okay, that's one of the techniques or that's one of the ways of applying this uh, object detection or uh, yeah, object detection, I would say face detection. And then we will be applying YOLO3 to understand how it performs better than hard cascades. Okay, I have set my working directory in block one. I have imported OpenCV2. You might need to use this particular command if you are using Jupyter to install OpenCV if you are doing it for the first time. This command is something which I'm pasting it over here, but you don't have to worry because you are going to get all these things if you are downloading my GitHub notebooks, okay? I'm importing NumPy, which I know that I'll be needing it very often. So I'm importing matplotlib as well, which is a visualization library because I'll be needing it to display my images. And the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to use OpenCV2 to read a particular image. Uh, the image that I'm going to read is stored in my working directory. Where exactly is my working directory? This is the working directory which I'm dealing with right now. If I have to show it to you guys, this is what I have, okay? This is my working directory. And I have all my images over here. You could see the cat images that I have, okay? I'm reading this cat images and by default, OpenCV reads any particular image into blue channel. As I have mentioned, RGB, these are the only three channels that we have, okay, in case the image is colored. So OpenCV by default, reads any particular image into blue channel. If you could see the original image, this is what I have, okay? And this is how OpenCV has read it. I can convert any particular channel to any other channel by using CV2 color BGR to RGB, okay? Usually all the images that you'll see in your real life has an RGB tonality, okay? by default as i had mentioned opencv reads in reads all the images in b uh, gr channel so blue is most prominent so i convert b gr to rgb which gives me the original image as i had seen it in my folder okay now there are different kinds of filtering techniques which you could apply for any particular images okay i am this is a particular image that i have i'm adding some kind of noise over here okay some random noise i'm adding it over here and then what i'll be doing is this is another convert signal that i have so these are different types of images that could be represented currently this is an array that you could see so noise is basically an array so these are some of the image these are some of the ways by which you could also represent your images now if i have to apply these particular things how would i be doing that so i'm reading an, another image that i have okay if you could see i have this particular image that i'm going to read right now i'm reading this image over here and when i'm reading this image i'm making sure that it is also getting converted into rgb okay so that i don't get this particular blue tonality this is the figure size that i'm giving this is mostly the border the size of the figure that i want and what i'm doing is i'm applying something called as mean filter okay so when i do when i say i'm applying mean filter these are some of the techniques by which you could actually reduce or increase your distortion as well if you could see there are different mean filters that has been applied what i have done is i have used these particular values to apply my mean filtering technique on so i'm applying mean filter equal to 7 11 25 and the other one is sorry 3 7 11 and 25. i could blur my images as well at times as a kind of pre-processing technique you might also need to blur your images okay so when i'm blurring my images what i'm essentially doing is 
I'm doing a Gaussian filter. You could see the outputs that I have over here. Okay. Now, at this point in time, or from this particular perspective, you might not be very much clear on when and how you need to use this. As in when you would be getting images, you would have to do a lot of pre-processing. For the people who are aware about the pre-processing techniques that you'll have to do for, let's say, numbers and non-numbers related data, let's say numbers and text, you can also apply similar pre-processing techniques for your images. Or at times, pre-processing techniques are something which is pretty much required as well. You cannot actually escape those things. So these are some of the methods that you have in OpenCV which will help you understand the different types of pre-processing techniques which you might have to apply. Okay. Now coming to a particular object detection technique, a specific case of an object detection is a phase detection, wherein we'll try to understand, uh, wherein we'll try to give a particular image and we'll try to see whether a particular phase is being detected or not. So for that, what we'll do is, we will be applying a particular XML file this is something that will act as a pre-trained model. So this XML file has all the necessary annotations for different images. So imagine that you have thousand images and for all those thousand images, you exactly know which coordinates represent a particular phase. That is what we are using over here, which is in the form of an XML file, okay? This is an XML file, which I have it over here. Where is this file? Yeah. R cascade frontal phase default. Okay, that's the XML file that I'm loading it over here. And the next thing that I'm doing is I'm passing a cat image from my test image folder. This is the cat image which I'm passing. And I'll try to see whether this phase will be detected or not. Okay, that's the objective that I'm trying to do over here. I'll write a few lines of code which will process this particular input image and also process this particular XML file with the help of which I should be able to detect the face of my cat. Okay, that is what I'll try to do. For that, I'm closing all the images that I have. And I'll execute this particular block of code 22, which will help me to detect this particular portion of the face of that particular cat. If you had already seen, when I was reading this cat image, it was not detecting the face. Now let's see whether it does or not. You see? The image, the face of cat is being detected. Let's try another image. Let's try this image of Leonardo. Okay, we'll try to see whether this works or not. I'll just change the name over here and I'll execute this and I'll see the output. Okay, I need to close this. Sorry, something happened. This will run. Okay. Uh, let me just change this test image. Let's hold on for a moment, guys. This is going to work. And here you go. See, it's able to detect the face of Leonardo. You can give me any other images if you want, if you want to try it out. Let's try for Albert Einstein. Okay, then I also have the horse images, which I'm going to try and show it to you. So Albert Einstein, let's see what it does. See, it is able to do that, right? Then I have the horse image. It's not very proper over here, but yeah, mistakes could happen over here. And that's the reason I say that this is not one of the best techniques that I have. Okay, so if I use cat2, let me just try one last instance. Okay, again, this is not working properly. But again, as I have said, this is not a foolproof technique. The other technique that I have, which is mostly yellow 3, this is not the latest version of yellow, but this works pretty much good over here. So what I do is, similarly, I'll be setting my working directory. Okay, I would be importing the necessary libraries and I am, see, I have already downloaded these few things. Coco name, this is the pre trained model which I'm going to use. 
labels you know v3cfg and weights this is a pre-trained model in the sense that all the weights and the labels are already available to me so i'll be using that pre-trained model and i would be passing on an image to see how it works by the way these are all the labels which this pre-trained model is worked on so if you are training of you if you want to use any other images based on these few things it is going to work pretty much good but if you are going to use any particular images which does not have things like elephant boat or something then it might have some problem okay i'm loading the weight and the configuration file over here i'm loading the yolo model over here okay i'm getting all the this is basically what my yolo network looks like this is the architecture of yolo model in textual format okay now what i'll do is i would be passing on certain images okay which i have in my test folder and i'll try to see how it works so what i'll do is i'll just run all these steps and the image that i have in place over here is where is that image the image of a horse guys yeah the image of a horse is the image that i'm trying to plan over here so if you could see this is working pretty fine over here okay the image is being detected now if you notice in the previous instance horse was not able to detect properly okay now what i'm going to do is i'm also i'll also try to see whether cat is being detected or not so i'll replace horse with cat to wherever i find it so i'll replace this with cat too and i'll try to see whether this works or not and what happened okay this is working this is running guys this is running and see this is the output that i'm getting pretty perfect you could see it's identified this as cat object detection and image classification in one single model 0 0.08635 is the confidence with which it says that this is a cat okay so this is the probability score of the classified model okay on top of classification it has also done an object detection i'll uh, I'll, I'll try to see whether it works fine for the image for leonardo or not this is not running okay this is running 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 this hold on hold on hold on here we go this is what you get okay this is a person it's not named as leonardo because it has not been trained with leonardo that's the only reason for that okay einstein i hope the spelling is correct okay this is running running let's see this one as well to work this what do we get what do we get see person 99 percent probability such a high accuracy we are getting it over here okay now a particular signboard let's see whether it works or not this is something which is different then we'll try this this is working 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 see that the stop sign it has recognized this with a 99.99 percent accuracy because it knows what this thing is okay now let's see this one it's working 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 oh what happened oh none type so hold on guys let me just check what happened what's wrong test images one touch 
No, not sure why this is not working over here. Not a problem. I might have to check this again. But in any case, this is the last one which you're going to see, and then I'll move for the questions that you guys might be having. Okay, let's try to see this. Probably some uh, issue with the format of that image, but that could be resolved, guys. Not a, not an issue. See, oh, this has been misidentified as dog. Okay, probably because of the tail, or probably because of the whiskers. But whatever it is, it has been misclassified. So even this is not 90% accurate, but you could see the confidence score is also very low in this case. Okay, so this particular Yolo V3 model works pretty much fine. Okay, we have seen instances where it works pretty fine and where it does not work as well. But I would give this as a better model than the previous one. Okay. Having said that, I'm closing the session for now. Thank you. Have a good time.